Good Friday morning of the second uh, the second week of Easter. I gotta make sure. Uh, today's it's interesting. Today's uh, first reading is the Acts of the Apostles, and it's a famous Pharisee named Gamaliel. He's a really really smart guy. Okay, he was a member of the Sanhedrin. I think he's a member of the Sanhedrin. No, he's a Pharisee. He's a Pharisee. Okay, and they're beating up on the Christians. Okay, <laughs> to use some street talk. And Gamaliel says to he's a very wise man. This guy's a star, okay? He says, you know what? You can beat him up if you want to beat him up, but you guess what? If, you, if God's with him, you ain't going to win. You're fighting God himself. So you better not beat him up. That's what he's saying. You better not beat him up. You might be fighting God himself. It's a great text. I didn't. I I gave it New. I gave it some of my New Haven New Haven accent. You get it, but you got the point. Watch out who you're beating up. God might be on their side, and if they are, you lose. For 2,000 years, for 2,000 years, Gamaliel's thought and prophecy was right. <laughs> it's been proven right. Everybody tried to beat him up. The Romans, the Jews of Jerusalem, et cetera, et cetera. So you know, sorry, guess what? We're still here in their footnotes in history. Hmm? We studied the Roman Empire in the past. Mussolini thought he could revive it. They hung him by his feet. I love that scene in Milan. It's what happens to a fool, a tyrannical fool, okay? And that's the bottom line. You think you could destroy the church? Nice try. The church will be around long after you're not even a footnote. Why? Because God is present in her. That's why. Christ is the church. You're fighting against God himself. You lose. You lose. That's the bottom line. The, te- the attempt of the European community and the rest to, 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 neo, to, to neo-paganize the world, what has it proven? It's given us the 20th century. When you think of what the European community had provided in the wake of its modernity and its post-modernity, beginning in the 17th century, you look what it's done. It produced a century of horror, to quote one of the popes, a century of horror, the most civilized people in the world the most educated, the most enlightened, the most barbaric. Hmm? Hmm? Yeah. Be careful when you fight against the church. You might destroy yourself in the process. And that's the bottom line. And in the gospel today, in John's sixth chapter, famous sixth chapter, he doesn't have, as the synoptic gospels have, the institution of the Eucharist. The... um, but he has it his own version of this is the story in the desert with the multiplication of the loaves and the fish. That's the Eucharist, you see. And that was the primary symbol in the early church of the Eucharist, okay, of Christ, was the fish and the bread, especially the fish, ictus, Jesus Christ, Son of God, Savior, ictus. So the symbol, the fish, the multiplication of fish, okay, and the bread, that's the Eucharist. No doubt about it. But John writes in profoundly symbolic terms. He's a religious genius. He's not a good storyteller. He's a myth maker. He tells the depth of the story using historical moments. But you have to see, it's the great drama. It's the great narrative of the church. The living church in the desert of life, nurtured by the, blood and, by the body and blood of Christ. You see, on the cross, that's John's gospel, okay? but also in the desert here, the symbol, the Eucharist, the life of the community of faith. And that's the truth. I think of Gamaliel saying, you fight fight against Christ, you lose. You may crucify him, but in his death, he will transform the world. He will conquer you through death, not through hate or vengeance, but through the intimacy of love. That love conquers power. Love conquers power through the intimacy of communion. And the holy communion in the desert is the body and blood of Christ, consumed and celebrated in the church every day. As we walk together as a community of love in the great desert, the great desert of life. This seems so true to me. Yesterday I spoke about the fireweed, the resurrection account, the fireweed. Powerful thing, powerful in their delicacy. Today, it's the journey in the desert, fed by the body of Christ, the Eucharist, the bread and the fish, you see, multiplied infinitely. 
as we journey through a desert that is often hostile, thank, thank of Gamaliel, but yet perseveringly alive, never defeated. And even in its worst moments, the most difficult moments, she's the most alive, the blood of the martyrs. For I mentioned this, I don't know if it was yesterday or the day before, when I see John's account of the crucifixion, Christ's death on the cross, and the water and the blood from his side, that's one of the most powerful symbols of the whole New Testament, period. Now I always think of, of obviously, uh, <clears throat> baptism in the Eucharist, okay? And I, I think that's true. But only very recently, I like in this past week or so, I realized it's not only baptism and the Eucharist, but baptism and martyrdom. It's a multifaceted set of symbols. Because the church comes alive, not only through baptism, which we celebrated last night, okay? A holy Saturday night, okay? That's, today is still Easter Sunday, okay? You know that. But it's all through the blood of the martyrs. The blood of the martyrs. Starting with Christ, the apostles, all but John are martyred. And out of their blood came the birth of the church. The blood of the martyrs. Oh, Gamaliel was right. Even if you kill them, they're still alive. And out of their blood, if God is on their side, then even in their blood, they will transform. In their death, they will become instruments of life. They will become the source of life, the blood of life itself. The blood of the martyrs, the blood of life itself. I never said it that way before. <laughs> you got it the first time here. Yeah, the blood of the martyrs, the blood of life itself, the life of the church. And it is true. I think of the American martyrs, the North American martyrs, the Jesuits, in their work with the Native American community, the only evangelization that worked because they shed their blood. And the Native communities, the Aboriginal communities, respected their blood. Yeah. They respected it and drew life from the blood of the martyrs. Yeah. That's the truth. I think of our men, the martyrs, that my own fellow passionists who died in China. And out of them, just their memory alone, they were murdered. They were shot to death. Three of them, one guy, Constantine Leach, died of uh, malaria. I believe it was malaria. But the other three were young guys. They were just there and they got shot. They were murdered. They were gunned down. That was back in 1929. In 1959, I joined the order. Their, their pictures were everywhere, and the, their death, their heroic deaths that they left this country to go to a very foreign country with a foreign language, et cetera, and risking their lives. They were in the middle of the interior. They're buried somewhere there now. Right? Out of their death, the vibrancy of the faith and the passionate community derived. We sat there, and some of us then didn't feel called to the missions. It didn't need to be. It didn't have to be, but we were nurtured by the heroism of the men who died in China. And I'm still nurtured by it. I remember I told you the other day, I know I followed that whole thing up when Paul Ubinger, whose man went to prison there, but came out. He was Bishop O'Gara, Cuthbert O'Gara's assistant. And I remember asking him, if Paul, would you want it? Father Paul, would you want to go back? He said he'd walk back to almost certain martyrdom, the blood of the martyrs. Okay? The blood of the martyrs, along with the Eucharistic bread. See, the church grows through baptism and blood. And she's nurtured in her journey in life. We are, by the body and blood of Christ that we celebrate together in faith as a loving community, together as we walk across the desert. Gamaliel was right. Fight us, you can try to kill us, you can like us all you want. But in the end, you can't fight God and the church will flourish. She will flourish.